Hello, Dr. Harrison? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, now I can. My name is Miss V, and I am covering for Urban Buzz Magazine and for Examiner.com here in Jacksonville, Florida. Urban Buzz is in New York City. And I'd like to say welcome to you. And we look forward to having you come to Jacksonville. I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to it as well. And Happy New Year also to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dr. Harrison, I see that you are the founder of the Gospel Heritage Praise and Worship Conference. That is your baby, correct? That is my what? Your baby. And I, I was so grateful and still so grateful. He's such a great guy. 
And, um, of course, he's going on to do great things as well in other arenas. But, yeah, that was a special, special time and a great relationship to us for another day. Amen. I would like to quote you in something that you said that I thought was very amusing uh, with how people so see. You had said, and uh, this whole article that you had written was about sowing seeds. You said, these folks put chips in the offering rather than tithes. They are the first to let you know that the pastor is pimping the church, and they won't be part of anything that contributes to his or her financial upbuilding. They are also very astute at pointing out the most negative attributes, finding fault, and backbiting are their full-time job. I thought that was very yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's, that's pretty strong, huh? <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is very true. Uh, can I take you a little bit back a little bit more? You know how the Word of God says that you know, uh, and after we do things for such a time as this, well, I have been carrying around these magazines overseas and back to the States, I guess for such uh, a time as this, because I never knew that I would be speaking with you directly. Wow, that is amazing. But this, I have in, in my hand now a copy of Score magazine dated May, June 1993. Wow. And Blair Underwood is on the cover. The L.A. Hulk produces Christian video. Okay, I think he, he has gone on, too, to do a, a Bible rendition. And I forgot what the name of the right. Bible is. Right. But anyway, you, and I love your hairstyle. <laughs> I love your hairstyle. Uh, but you had made mention of the dream has died, but the dream lives on. You had went to a commemorative service for Dr. Martin Luther King, uh -huh. Jr., and you were speaking of uh, the cry for truth, justice, and liberty that echoes throughout that service. And I'd like to know, can you share a little bit about... Uh, what you had said about Brother, if you can remember, Brother Franklin D. Williams, uh, when he said their dreams will live on, and also Minister Thomas Whitfield. You had given them both credit. Yeah, both of those guys were, were dear friends of mine. Both of them obviously are gone on to glory, but um, I don't really remember what I both said, but I do remember that they had a great impact on my life. And that um, even now, as I see the, the spirit that they deposited in gospel music, I think it was something that this gospel, this gospel here at this conference and all that we do in gospel, we need to remember those who paved the way. And that's, you know, that's the essence of a, a legacy, that it lives on beyond the person who established it. And I think that that's the importance of what we do with, with um, gospel heritage, that we perpetuate a legacy that's bigger than just, you know, what we do on stage at that conference. Amen. If I might quote you here, you said, as a singer or minister of the gospel, as a child of the king, I challenge you today to walk in your God-inspired calling, and not only that, teach, train, and even inspire those around you to perpetuate that dream. I saw that in the remembrance that is Martin and Thomas and in Frank. They realized that only a dream inspired by God would last. More importantly, they realized that God's plan was bigger than them. So they put themselves in a position of being a part of the plan not the cause and the reason. I thank God for these men of faith and even more for the legacy of their dreams. And that is what wow. you wrote. And thank you. You're welcome. I didn't I just thought it was so appropriate for the upcoming Heritage Conference, the for Heritage Praise and Worship Conference, that you spoke those words back in nineteen 
93. Wow. And here it is coming to fruition today. Right. Amen. Now, can I get you to say anything else about, uh, which I didn't mention scoreboard. That was part we, of the um, consolidated everything so God can be able to help the publication. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we are I'm just doing God's publication. Everything is going to publication now. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would say that um, now more than any time in our history, we need to focus on um, what it is that we are called to do and how worship changes lives. Um, the understanding that I have of worship is that it's beyond what we do when we lift our hands or we sing or whatever in the sanctuary. Yeah. But it affects what we do every day and how we do it. If you're a worshiper, you realize that your gifts and talents, your skills, and everything that you're called to do, whether you're um, a pastor or a, a construction worker, is to be done to the glory of God. And so how we exercise that gift and how we walk with, with what integrity we live and how we treat other people is the essence of worship. So when we have a time to come together and really review um, and, and then project what we're going to do, I think it's important to realize that worship is what moves us as a society, as a the culture into a position with the with the secular culture where we begin we become the head and not the tail, and we begin to set standards that people look at and wonder how can you make it through this, and how do you stand up after that? And the only reason that we can tell them is because God so loved the world that He so loved us that we are saved and that we have a different mandate for our lives and a different call on our lives, and that's that's the essence of worship that changes lives. Other people should want to be like you. They should want to be around you. And they should learn from you. Okay. And um, hopefully that's what this conference is about. Well, amen. Thank you so much. Oh, I do have one more question. Is JJ any relationship to you? No, he's not. He's oh, not. Okay. Probably, you know, probably because we're all cousins. He probably is, but not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Harrison, I look forward to meeting you at the conference and you too. Okay. Bye bye.